Hey everyone, in today's video, I'm going to be going over my Undead Army Necromancer build that focuses heavily on having as many minions as possible just to create these massive battles in the dungeons. Not only does it just create massive battles in the dungeons, it's also just really effective. Like your character stays safe for a majority of the time. You're able to throw out tons of damage, not from your minions, but from yourself as well. And like, who doesn't love just having an army of guys to just run through an entire dungeon with? Anyways, let's dive into the build now. So starting off with the stats, I went with Decompose as my first skill. It's going to be the best option out of the four here. This one's mainly just used to generate essence for herself. We're not really depending on this for damage, really. But when we do go up it a little bit, we grab Enhanced Decompose, which honestly isn't important. It's whenever you kill an enemy with Decompose, you gain 10 more essence instead. We're never really going to be killing people with Decompose, so we don't need that at all. But what I really wanted to grab was Acolyte Decompose. You and your minions deal 10% increased damage to enemies who are being decomposed. So while I'm regenerating essence for my other skills, my minions are going to be doing increased damage to that target. It's kind of like a nice little, instead of me just not throwing out any damage at all while I'm regenerating my essence, I can increase the damage of my minions so there's always some sort of damage output going on or people doing increased damage. Then going down to the tree, I grabbed Blight. This one's probably one of the most important skills in the mix here. Unleash a concentrated blight that deals 933 damage and leaves behind a defiled area dealing 2,488 damage over 6 seconds. These numbers are going to be different for everybody depending on your level, your gear, stats, and all that kind of stuff. But the damage isn't the most important part about it. When we go further down it, blight slows enemies by 25%, which is really helpful because I have a bunch of things that allow my minions and myself to do increased damage to enemies that are slow or stun. So slowing and stunning enemies is going to be a helpful part of this build, but it's not heavily focused on crowd control. It's just a nice feature to it. Then the next one is Supernatural Blight. You and your minions deal 15% increased damage to enemies within Blight. So this is the one skill you kind of want to just toss out left and right during those big fights. So not only is it going to be doing lots of damage, but your minions are going to be doing extra damage as well. And it just stays on the ground for 6 seconds dealing damage over time. So once you throw it out, you don't have to worry about it or anything. Then the next one is Sever. This one's going to be one of our biggest, actually it's going to be our biggest damaging skill for ourselves, not for our minions but just for us. So what Sever does is a specter of you charges forward and attacks with a scythe for obviously me it's 2300 damage for other people it's going to be different but you know you get that. Then returns to you and attacks again for 746 damage. The best way to use this is obviously throwing it right in front of you so you can hit the enemy twice but ideally with this build you want to attack enemies from a distance. You never want to be up close to them because our character is not the tankiest but we do have a couple of things that make up for that to increase our survivability. Following down to that there, I did get more stuff. Severed damages enemies along its path for 40% of its initial damage. That's not too, too important. Obviously, it's a nice little bonus, but it's whatever. We really just wanted to move to the next one to get Supernatural Severed. This one is extremely important. Definitely get this. Sever deals 2% increased damage for each minion you have upon cast. This is another reason why this skill is going to be doing tons of damage with this setup. The main thing for this build is just having a huge army around you to deal constant damage and to obviously, you know, tank for you, block other enemies and stuff like that there. So having as many minions as possible is going to increase the damage of this attack. So the more guys we have, the more damage we can throw out. And honestly, you don't need to max these out right away. The best thing to do is just first unlock all of the skills you have and then start to max it out. So going back down the tree, uh, don't get corpse explosion. I have this unlocked because of an item I have. It's honestly not important at all. Just ignore it. The main thing you want to grab here is skeletal warrior mastery. It's going to increase the damage and life of our skeletal warriors by 45% once it's at level 3. Definitely a really big passive that you'll want to grab. Anything that increases the damage or life or anything to do with minions and skeletal warriors and all of our summonings pretty much, you always want to grab that. So this one is very big. Don't miss out on that. Then continuing down the tree, same thing again here. We don't really get Iron Maiden or Decrypify. I'm not sure if I pronounced that right, but... Either way, we don't really get these. They don't benefit this build too heavily in terms of damage and utility and helping our minions out. They're just not really as important as other skills. But we do get a good passive down here, Skeletal Mage Mystery, that increases the damage and life of our Skeletal Mages by 60%. Same thing as the other one up here, Skeletal Warrior Mystery, just a little bit more damage and life. 
Then going down the tree, we get three of the necrotic carapace. I don't know if I pronounced that right or not, but you know what? It is what it is. When a corpse is formed from your skills or your minions, fortify for 6% of your base life. Fortify is going to be a pretty big thing for survivability, just reducing the amount of damage we take by 10%. Because again, our character isn't that tanky in this build, so every little bit of protection will help out. But on the other hand here, on the other, well, other hand, more other side, the passives here are going to be pretty handy. So the first one, Reaper's Pursuit, damaging enemies with darkness skills increases movement speed by 5% for 3 seconds. Honestly, movement speed is always an important thing with no matter what build you're using but i didn't focus too heavily on it i don't know i don't really care to be able to run fast i wanted as much damage and health for my minions as possible just to see those big battles escalate anyways then the next one up here gloom when you damage enemies with darkness skills they take six percent increased shadow damage from you and your minions for two seconds stacking up to three times this is why it was really important to get decompose blight and sever because all of those deal darkness damage so we're gonna be able to stack that passive up extremely quickly basically we'll get that up to 18 percent in like a heartbeat no problem at all then on the bottom here i grabbed crippling darkness darkness skills have up to a 15 percent chance to stun for two seconds i only grabbed it up to rank two obviously grabbing three seconds would probably be the most ideal but i kind of ran out of points at the end and i didn't find this too too important but definitely handy if you want you could put three into this here and take one out from there but i don't know i found two seconds was a pretty good amount of time and then the last one here terror is another really big one darkness skills deal nine percent bonus damage to enemies who are slowed and nine percent bonus damage to enemies who are stunned or mobilized and these bonuses stack and apply apply to shadow damage dealt by your minions. Basically, whenever I slow an enemy and stun an enemy, I'm going to be able to get an 18% increased damage buff from this one passive. Again, another solid thing, and that's what this build is heavily focused on, is just getting passives that increase not only my own damage, but mainly my minions damage. If I can get a 2 for 1, that's also a huge bonus. Anyways, going back down the tree here, to almost the last one, I grabbed 3 of the Golem Mastery, increases the damage and life of your golem by 75 percent that is massive the golem is going to be your most tankiest unit and usually the last one alive so my entire team my golem skeletal mages well maybe not the mages so much but the warriors are going to be able to take and absorb a ton of damage so even during those big boss fights where i guess minions are dying left and right they're going to be able to hold their own very well continuing back down i grabbed well on the same note actually but to the left of it i grabbed army of the dead this one is a really helpful ultimate and i wouldn't recommend getting any of the other ones especially for a minion build so what this does is you call forth the deep buried dead volatile skeletons emerge over the next seven seconds that explode when around enemies dealing 930 damage but when i kept continuing down the path i grabbed prime army of the dead which when army of the dead's volatile skeletons explode they have a 15 percent chance to leave behind a corpse so again back to like the boss fight things whenever you're up against like a big boss and you're not really able to get any corpses because you're not killing enemies it's just one guy in front of you this is going to give you a pretty good chance to leave behind a bunch of corpses on the ground so you can turn those into more skeletal mages warriors and just keep as many guys coming as possible and then the next one is Basically the better version of that, Supreme Army of the Dead. Army of the Dead also raises your skeletal warriors and skeletal mages. Let's say if my entire team gets wiped by a boss and I activate that, I basically respawn all of my soldiers in, and because of the other one, Prime Army of the Dead, I'm also going to have a 15% chance to leave behind another corpse whenever those skeletons explode on impact. It's just a really huge ultimate that can basically reset your entire team and more. As an ultimate, it kind of just speaks for itself. It's literally the ultimate move you can pull in any situation. Then going back down here, all of this stuff is really minion focused, so you'll definitely want to max most of these out. The first one, Bonded in Essence. Every five seconds, your skeletal priest healing will heal your skeletons for an additional 60% of their maximum life. And this is obviously at rank three. The other ranks are going to be a little bit lower, but you'll want to get this maxed out. Then the next one is Death's Defense. Your minions cannot lose more than 30% of their maximum life from a single damage instance. This just means it's going to take at least three to four hits to kill all each minion so rather that's the shield guys the skeletal mages golem they're all going to take a minimum of four hits to kill 
And when you have as many minions as you possibly can, like just having an army of them, whoever you're fighting is going to have to throw a ton of damage really fast in order to get rid of your entire army. So Death's Defense is a really good skill for increasing our minions defenses and not just getting one shotted or two shotted by whatever enemy you go up against. It's also going to make it easier when you're taking on the higher level dungeons so none of your team is just going to die instantly and, and yourself gets swarmed. Then the next one, honestly... It's not horrible, but it's not really great. I mainly just grabbed one in here just so I could get to the last one, and that's Inspiring Leader. After you've been healthy for at least 4 seconds, you and your minions gain 4% attack speed. I personally didn't think this one was going to be too helpful for this build since I don't really depend on them for having a lot of attack speed, rather just being able to absorb a lot of damage and throw it a lot of damage. And I know attack speed contributes to doing more overall damage, but I didn't see it that helpful in comparison to some of the other ones I got instead. And then the next one is Hellbent Commander. Your minions deal 30% increased damage while you are close to them. You're never really going to be extremely far away from your minions, and you also don't want to be like right inside of them because then you're going to be taking hits as well. You'll usually be at like a medium distance, so this buff is going to be activated, just making your minions shred through any enemy you come across. Definitely recommended. Then heading down to the last part here, uh, for the key passives, I grab Shadow Blight. Shadow damage infects enemies with Shadow Blight for 2 seconds. You and your minions deal 10% bonus damage to enemies with Shadow Blight. Every 10th time an enemy receives Shadow damage from you or your minions while they are affected by Shadow Blight, they take an additional 421 Shadow damage. So similar to the Blight skill itself, whenever we hit enemies with Shadow damage, they're going to be taking 10% increased damage from ourselves and our minions. Almost every skill we use either increases the damage of our minions or makes that enemy take increased damage. That's the whole gist of the skills. There's not one that like absolutely nukes an enemy or something, but they're more like buffs for our minions while doing good amounts of damage. Now the next thing for the build is the Book of the Dead. It's honestly not that complicated or anything. I grabbed the Defenders, durable shield bearers with 15% increased life just to make them survive longer, and I grabbed the first one as well, which every 6 seconds your skeletal defenders negate the next instance of direct damage they would take. This is just going to make them last much longer on the battlefield instead of you having to constantly look for corpses to summon just because your guys are dying quickly in comparison to the first one or the third one and stuff. These ones are more for damage focused. This one obviously is not going to be doing as much damage, but since they're going to be able to last much longer and distract enemies for longer periods of time, you kind of are doing a bit more damage with this in comparison to the other ones because you're able to focus more on throwing out more damaging skills rather than looking for a corpse to summon a guy because he died in three seconds. Then for the Skeletal Mages, I grab the Cold Ones, which Cold Mages attacks will chill enemies, eventually freezing them in their tracks. Going back to what I was saying about stunning and slowing enemies, this is going to help us do even more damage because of the passive buffs that we have that increase the damage we do against enemies that are slowed or stunned, and Cold kind of just does both of those. I also grab the first one, each time your cold mages damages an enemy with their primary attack, I gain 2 essence. So on top of them doing damage, stunning, slowing enemies, I'm also getting essence back for myself so I can throw out more damaging skills like blight or sever more often before I have to switch to decompose to like regain my essence back. Then for the golem, I went with the bone golem because he has this taunt ability that comes really clutch in those big fights. Basically, you just activate the skill, he charges in wherever you're locked onto or aiming at and just taunts everyone in that area. It helps you like escape tight situations and also it just groups enemies together. So when you're throwing out blight, it's a lot easier to get large groups of enemies affected by it without having to shoot out 50 of them just wasting tons of essence. Also, the first little note for it, I grabbed that one because each time your bone golem takes up to 20 percent of its maximum life as damage and then it sheds a corpse so this goes back to when you're fighting a boss and you don't have any corpses to summon as long as you have your golem out on the field and he's just kind of tanking all the damage for you you're gonna gain corpses to summon and this also goes hand in hand with some of our other passives and abilities that give us a chance to spawn in more corpses so you're always gonna have guys with you in any fight you go up against now let's take a look at the gear so when it comes to the gear now, you're going to want anything that increases the amount of summonings you have, like increases the amount of skeletal warriors, mages. So coming in with the headpiece, I got the one where it increases the amount of skeletal warriors you have. So for the headpiece, I got the one where it increases the amount of skeletal warriors you have. Obviously, having more minions is going to be beneficial for not only damage output, but having more bodies in front of you to distract other enemies and stuff. Then for the chest piece, every 8 seconds, your cold skeletal mages cast a blizzard that deals 699 cold 
full damage and continuously chills enemies for 8% over 6 seconds. So this just goes back to the whole slowing enemies down, stunning them, and obviously, you know, doing more damage. But the really big thing about freeze comes with the weapon, and I'll get into that very shortly. Then with the gloves, I just put this on because I didn't have anything else to add. Obviously, this isn't going to be the best one you can get. Getting anything that increases the summoning's damage is going to be the most ideal. But for this one, whenever I cast Blight, it actually pulls in all the enemies around it into the affected area. So this one's actually pretty good. I wouldn't discourage this one too much because enemies that are in the Blight skill are going to be taking increased damage and taking damage from the skill itself. So if you don't have anything else like uh, the one where you get more skeletal warriors or your minions are going to do more damage, this is a very good backup pick. Then with the legs, this one's a more of a defensive one. I have about two of them just to ensure my character survivability. So damaging an elite grants you a barrier absorbing up to 1050 damage for 10 seconds. And this effect can only happen once every 30 seconds. Honestly, that there is perfect. It's just going to make us more tanky during those big fights. So when elites do run up to you, you're not just going to get instantly destroyed by them or even destroyed by them at a range. Like having some extra protection is going to be really helpful. Then with the boots, I kind of got screwed on this one since I already have the one where it increases the amount of skeletal warriors this one doesn't do anything so literally having anything here would be a lot more beneficial now what i was saying about the weapon this one is extremely important luckily these passives come with this weapon so anytime you pick it up you'll get these no matter what so first off your darkness skills chill enemies for up to 40 percent and all of my skills are darkness so anytime we attack an enemy we're just going to be slowing them and putting the chill effect onto them the lucky hit of it my darkness skills have up to a 100 percent chance to generate 10 additional essence against frozen targets after we freeze a target get from all of our darkness skills, the skeletal mages, whenever we cast out like let's say sever or blight, we're gonna get 10 essence back from that, just making it easier to spam skills more often. That's about the main thing with the weapon, making all of my skills basically freeze enemies as well and regenerating essence against those frozen targets, just so I can spam them more often before I have to use decompose to regenerate my mana. Then with the amulet, this one's vital. I would say this one is fully needed for this build. When hit while not healthy, a magical bubble is summoned around you for 5.3 seconds while standing in the bubble players are immune it can only happen once every 90 seconds if you're about to die a bubble comes around you and just grants you immunity from all damage for 5.3 seconds it, it just stops you from getting one-shotted by like some of the stronger guys in the game when you're taking on dungeons that are a much higher level than what you are yourself so this here and the other one on the legs that gives me a shield whenever i uh, damage an elite are are essential for this build in when it comes to survivability and again those are the only two things i really have when it comes to protection and for the rings one of them i have uh each time one of your summoning minions damage an enemy they gain 10 percent attack speed for three seconds up to 30 percent this is another reason why i went with the tankier minions just because they're going to be able to survive for longer periods of time because they are more tanky and they're going to be able to get the full benefit of this effect stacking it up to 30 percent very easily because again they're going to be surviving for longer periods of time and for the last amulet this is another one that honestly isn't needed at all and you could put whatever you want well this is even less needed than the one i have on my gloves attacking enemies with a basic skill increases the damage of your next core skill by seven percent up to thirty percent and honestly we're not using decompose that often so we're never really going to get a lot of damage out of our skills with this so feel free to just throw this out of the way now I'll show you guys the best way to use this build. So the first thing you're going to want to have is all of your minions always up and ready. You're going to want to use uh, Ray's Skeleton as much as possible. Well, not too often because once you have all of your guys summoned, you'll then summon a Skeletal Priest to empower your minions for 5 seconds, increasing their damage by 30% and healing them for 15% of their maximum health. You don't have to spam this too often. Every, again, every 5 seconds or every now and then when you see your minions are low on health, cast this up, increase all of their health, increase all of their damage very straightforward and basic then for golem this is the one i was talking about when you activate it he charges forward to the position you're aiming at and taunts all the enemies there to basically attack him this is the first skill you're going to want to use in the combo i have set up so when you throw him out and all the enemies are taunted by him just kind of attacking him they're all going to be piled up and that's when you're going to want to toss out blight since they're in that big pile blight is going to be able to hit all of them if not most of them relatively easily and because i have that armor piece that pulls enemies into the blight like that little pool that it leaves comboing the golem taunt with the blight pool is 
a perfect combination just because you gather them all up and then you toss blight on top of them making your minions do increased damage while they're taking damage over time. Since it's a darkness skill and deals shadow damage they're going to be taking increased damage and they're going to be getting chilled as well because of the buff on the sword that makes all the shadow damage skills chill enemies. Then after you use taunt, blight and they're all grouped together that's when you're going to want to use sever when they're all grouped together being taunted by the golem in the pool of blight taking increased damage getting chilled it sets up the entire thing for sever you're just gonna be cutting down that large group of enemies really quickly with this skill and then for the ultimate army of the dead this one's more used for when all of your minions are dead and you're about to get swarmed by a bunch of enemies and you kind of just need to restart your army it's honestly perfect it does quite a bit of damage you get all of your minions back and you get more corpses on the ground so you can either one buff the minions that just come back to you from this skill or if they're dying off too quickly you can just respawn them in right away the order of it is raise skeleton send the golem in throw the pool of blight out and then use sever to cut them down quickly decompose just to regain essence not really important and the ultimate army of the dead for whenever your minions are all dead or you're just in a really big fight well if you guys enjoyed the video be sure to check out some of my other build related videos well i don't have any more build related videos for diablo 4 but if this video does do good i'll continue to make them i have a bunch of other ones like elden ring if you want to check those ones out but anyways thanks for watching everyone